Hello everyone. I'm Henry Lee. Now uh, we are at uh, our Blue Heron Arts Studio uh, doing a demo of uh, mounting, um, dry mounting drawing paper um, with watercolor or sumi um, or anything on it. Um, because drawing paper is very um, economical to practice with. Um, I use them for my plein air sketch like this. Um, on the mountains, I can carry a lot of them. Um, and they're relatively cheap, so I don't have to worry about the cost. So in one morning, I can end up with uh, 10 or you know um, more sketches like this, uh, just outside my window. Um, the reason I'm doing this is uh, I had an accident when I uh, when I removed this painting from uh, a drawing board. I taped it. You know, uh, it got uh, torn. Um, I did it to to. Uh, uh, it could happen in the field. You know, you just got an accident, and you can see there's a cut, right. Uh, across it. Let me zoom in a little bit. <coughs> Maybe if, if you, you won't notice anymore, but it's right from here through there. It's a big cut, big torn line. Uh, but you don't notice that anymore because um, I have mounted it on another piece of uh, multimedia or drawing paper um, or any you know uh, heavier uh, support paper uh, with silicone dry mounting paper, so you can make a uh, ninety pound or you know less than maybe a computer paper into a heavyweight finished uh, painting like this. It could be it feels like a three hundred pound. Okay, um, so this is the another reason uh, is. Like uh, this Fabrio, very nice drawing paper, Fabriano uh, drawing paper. If you use watercolor, and this is what uh, will happen. Uh, it got curly, like waving like this. I tried to iron it, and you, 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 you still get a little curve. I iron it uh, with water. So, um, what you what you can do, you, you, you can, of course, you can stretch it with tape, but tape sometimes uh, creates a problem on the edge. Uh, you, can, you can press it, uh, but it it's, you know, takes time. What about mass producing them with the dry mounting? So I did this, um, I just mounted a silicone release paper um, on the back of it. You can see, I can peel it off and then uh, put it on a permanent support. I'll do it uh, later. And I like this one I just did, okay? So this one is uh, dry mounted on another uh, similar drawing paper, but a little larger, so it creates a little margin. You can see it, the double layer. So now you cannot really fold, I mean, uh, roll it anymore. Before mounting, the uh, you know, advantage of using this kind of paper is that yeah, I can uh, roll it to carry or send it overseas without uh, cost, cost too much. Um, but if I already mount it on a silicone, you can still roll it. If you put a backing on it, it will be hard to roll into a tube. You have to send it to flat. But I can still send this in a larger tube, maybe. Um, so I will show you the, the process. It's similar to mounting Chinese paper, rice paper. Um, so we, we do the uh, flattening and the mounting in the same state. You don't have to flat it, uh, but you can, you know, to make it flat like this. So just spray it and eye on the back. Um, I will just do it um, the same time I flatten it. 
the silicone. You can we call this uh, method A. That's it. That's your mounts on the on the back of the the painting, right? And uh, if you want, you can uh, use method B uh, using another support. I would use something like this. It's a machine made uh, synthetic paper, I guess. It's relatively cheap, but it has good teeth. It's a watercolor paper, 140 pound. I can use that uh, as a backing as well. So let's do both. So method A is to um, mount the painting first. Still, I would relax the painting with uh, a little water. Um, this is very important that you don't want to spray anywhere in this working area. You can spray by holding it away from the table. Let me see if you can see it. Just away from the, the table, you know, I, I put the bottle outside the table and you can hear it. Spray some water and you can see the painting start to um, relax. You don't want to spray too much, which might cause the color to bleed. Um, because the watercolor tends to remelt when, when you got too wet. But it's, it's, a, it's okay, just a little mist. Then you put the painting on top of the, the paper. I would iron on the, on the front. You can also do it on the back. The, f the painting will be facing down. It's a little bit um, risky <laughs> because I cannot see what ha what happens. You know, this is what I do. I use the release paper from a previous painting I did. Um, you will see how I get this piece of paper in a minute. So you can put this on the facing down, but make sure the paper is, I mean, the padding is clean. So I just do it this way. There's a wax side of this release paper. It should be shiny. Oh, actually, this should be the right way. Oh, I didn't plug in. That's often. Sometimes the, the iron would uh, automatically shut because every iron has an anti-fire uh, fire feature that it will be auto automatically shut off to so make sure it's on, it's on. I set um, silk uh, a little higher than silk. Between silk and the wall um, is the setting of 180 Fahrenheit. I've never <laughs> measured that. You know, as long as it works, because um, if it's higher, you you, I think it's much easier than rice paper. So you just activate, activate the the silicone um, with uh, this heat. Yeah, and then uh, you can turn it over. Um, just iron on the back. This is the the back of the the painting. So make sure there's no bubble. So I, I kind of place uh, a position in it in, in the front. Then I uh, iron with the protecting sheet still under it. So it, it's not um, going to stand anything. That's the, just for, for sure, you know, not to because sometimes you get silicone left over residual on the on the uh, padding or color or something you could stain your painting. Okay, just make sure it's all flat nicely, and then um, it's perfectly flat. But it will still curve because the stretch, you know. Um, gives the thinness basically. Um, but if you frame, it, it's perfect, you know, you can tape the, uh, the corners or the edge. Behind the mat, it's, it's already uh, ready to, to frame. And you can keep this uh, silicone release paper 
with it. So I, I can still uh, roll it to send to the, uh, the collector. Um, this is a scene, by the way, outside my window upstairs. Beautiful uh, snowy mountain these days. Um, so if you if you want to frame, you can either keep this, you know, just keep, I, I don't see what uh, create any problem because the uh, silicon is acid free. And this paper don't even touch the painting with, with the silicon film in between. So you can just uh, peel it off and then iron it um, to a permanent support. Okay. Is it still warm? Let me do another one just to show you this. This one is the same I did earlier. So it's already cold. You can, you can see this will not stay because when it's cold, it's easy to peel it off. It's heat sensitive, so when it's warm, it stick together. But you know, when it's cold, it, it will separate. So if you got the painting from me um, like this, you can uh, transfer it onto a watercolor painting uh, paper or any um, multimedia pen, uh, drawing paper or anything um, that's acid free or nice, you know. So you can put this release on, protect the painting, and then just activate, no water, just, just a activate the silicone with some heat. Because it's a, the paper is kind of thick, so I will increase the temperature a little bit. See, I got some stickiness. If the silicone paper is a little bigger, you might got stick on your iron. That's why this paper is important. Um, sometimes you will see some, uh, some shining spot uh, around the edge. That's uh, silicone. And you can use a rubber like this. The, 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 the rubber uh, I use to remove the uh, uh, masking, masking fluid in watercolor. That, that will work to remove the, residu the accident of the silicone getting on the, on the uh, uh, watercolor painting. But be careful if it's, um, if it's rice paper, this might be too hard. So just avoid, try to uh, uh, avoid the, uh, just clean the iron with the uh, paper towel frequently. <laughs> just make it, make sure it's clean and keep the dust protecting paper uh, always on top of the painting. Make sure it's not, you know, if you turn this side, if you flip the side, the dust will go on the painting or the silicone film. So th this is the finished look. You, you get uh, um, a permanent support. Now it's hard to bend. It's like a 300 pound weight, very heavy weight, uh, because that's 140 pound plus 90. Yeah, over, over uh, 250 or 240. Right? Anyway, let me to another one, uh, we call it method, method B. Method B is much easier. Um, no pressure, no um, risk. You, 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 you know which uh, paper you're going to use for support. That's uh, um, the reason to use method B. If you don't know what you know to to do, you can use method A and then decide. Now I already decided to use this one, and uh, let me pick a pen here. Let's do. I like the one with uh, with this. Okay. Oh, this is already method A. <laughs> uh, 
So this is uh, already mounted. I cannot do that one. What about this one? This one is, uh, um, you can see, it, this is the original backing. There's some pins on it. Um, it's, it's not perfectly flat because I already uh, spray some water, iron it. This is, this is a good uh, advice. Uh, suggestion, uh, my advice for you to prepare for method B. You need to iron the painting with some water to flatten it. If you cut, if you come like this, you better do do that. Just iron, uh, just like iron a shirt, you know. Put some water and iron this to make it flat. So it will still curve like this. That's why we need to use this support and uh, prepare a silicone. Paper that's exactly the same size as the painting. I just, you know, cut around it with a razor blade. Okay, and uh, now I mount the paper on the support first. Okay, facing down the the film side facing the supporting uh, paper okay then activate that no water no water need so method b uh, is dry mounting straight but this one uh, you already um, spray some water and iron it separately before you do this okay that's a recommended if it looks okay you know if it looks like a like this, you don't have to because it's already stretched. You know, I used some uh, mechanism and stretched it. You can fix the corner with some uh, water and it takes a little time. It's the same thing as a preparation. Just stretch it or iron it uh, before you mount it. Okay. Now, uh, after you cool down a little bit, you, you peel off this release paper and you know what now it's called yeah the protecting sheet okay now I got the protecting sheet to protect dust from my iron and you can see another reason is that because the silicon film is larger it's wider than this original I purposely did that sometimes it's easier to position so that I don't have to be very precise However, if you have this situation that like there are films up to the edge, uh, if you don't protect it with this piece of paper, that silicone film will, will stick on your iron and you will leave some uh, shining spot on the painting when you glide through the painting. So this is very important, okay? Just make sure you protect the painting with this uh, relief release paper before you put the iron on so even you, your iron may got uh, glues film um, on the extra edge it's okay because you're protected by the uh, release paper now protecting sheet I call it you can use other paper if you want you know just a piece of uh, computer paper would do or uh, newsprint, or drawing paper, yeah, thin uh, tracing paper, or anything. Um, this this release paper just come natural, you know. It just got from the silicone comes with the silicone film, so it's very handy and convenient. And if it's too small, you can move around. You can use your left hand to move around. You know, just like that. So you, you, you can stroke over the painting, not stop at the edge. You can cover the edge and the corner like this. Go all the way around, outside of the painting. Okay. I think it, it has the same effect like a, a rice paper. It, after mounting, the color just shiny, uh, more glossy maybe. And it is because there's no Wave, it looks very perfect and neat. Um, some more iron. 
just make sure if it's okay if you missed some spark because the watercolor paper does not rely on the backing paper uh, it, it just serves as a um, like a backing board you know just now it's a thir uh, 300 pound paper feel it, you cannot roll it anymore but there's no curly uh, the, the roll you know so it looks very finished when you go there, you can go right into the frame. But if you receive a painting like this, you might do this to, uh, this not last step yourself. Because if you live in Europe, <laughs> you know, I, I, to send this is much more expensive than this, maybe. Because this cannot be put in a tube. Um, especially with large size. You, much le uh, less expensive to send a tube than a box. Mm -hmm. So I still consider this is mounted. You can, if you got this, you know, if the paper stays on the back, uh, we sometimes we don't know it, it will stay. So you just um, put on behind the the mat. You don't have to transfer it onto a permanent support. If you do, it will be nice. Yeah. So it will not. It won't make a difference from um, outside the frame. But it just. I don't know. Um, this feels more formal. This one may be a little bit uh, thin. This will, you know, just um, beside this. Uh, this. You can, what you can do is, uh, if you like to paint without uh, paper, you know, li like curling like this, you might want to mount the thin uh, paper, this kind of paper. Uh, maybe you can stack two together or you can mount on a, a less expensive watercolor paper as a support. Uh, so you get a 300 pound paper much cheaply. <laughs> if you like the surface like me, I like the uh, like a hot press feel um, for detail and flow fluidity, you know, without much uh, uh, grains. Um, like a figure drawing is perfect with this paper, right? Um, so for any reason you want to make it thicker, you can use silicone dry mounting paper for that purpose. Um, of course, you can combine the natural you know, stretch with this. Uh, you, can, you can flat your painting without silicone, but still, you know, it, it's nicer. It, it, just look, you know, it, it just looks more glossy for some reason, shiny than unmounted piece. Maybe, yeah, I think it is, there's uh, uh, the white looks looks uh, wider, you know, with the double double weight, with backing. Let's see this this one also mounted the same way. Um, so there's need for mounting watercolor uh, if you use a very thin. 90 pound paper. You can buy this kind of paper uh, for uh, 100 sheets less than $20, maybe 15 I, I forgot. I will put the link if I can, uh, if you need, uh, under the video description. Um, so you can practice a lot. Practice is very important to get uh, the skill, like a sumi strokes, you know. If you if you just paint through the procedure, you know, you, you, don't, you don't sketch this much, you won't get the calligraphy um, spontaneously. So you have to practice to get the spontaneity, um, which is the, the Eastern approach to watercolor. And then uh, you can you have to know how to make the um, cheap paper look look good without uh, 
this kind of feel, you know. Okay, hope you enjoy this video and happy holidays. Or you can use this to make greeting cards, by the way. Same technique. You can mount the, your painting with cardstock. Make your own greeting cards. I have another video showing that already in previous years. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye bye.